Today, a Chinese CPU doesn't look to be Chinese, and he's having more issues. Your PC is at risk, Intel's 14-gen CPUs get insane clocks, and cheaper AMD GPUs just leaked. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have a very interesting story about a new CPU that was recently released by a computer manufacturer called Power Leader. This new CPU is apparently the first generation called the PowerStar P3-01105. You can actually see it right up here and it features a new Storm Core architecture. Now obviously I'm using air quotes here for a very good reason because this is almost certainly an Intel CPU that's just been rebranded as a domestic Chinese CPU. More specifically, it's apparently an Intel Core i3-10105 Comet Lake CPU, which comes with four cores and eight threads. As you can see right here, it's described as, quote, extremely high performance, x86 compatible, which is definitely an odd one, and offering great support for Windows. Unfortunately, pretty much none of this was really mentioned in Chinese news media coverage, as they say here such as IT Home, there was simply no kind of hints or anything like that suggesting that it is a rebranding. In fact, one of our first of many, I do have to say, and I'll get to pretty much all of them, but one of the first things we see is actually on a statement of something else that they released, which is an actual tower PC, dubbed PC PT620P, and it features this new CPU. In a statement about it, they actually state that it, quote, has extremely high performance, which is several times higher than that of the domestic CPU. Now, obviously this is machine translated, so there can be some things lost in translation, but at least from what it sounds like here, it's like they're saying this domestic CPU is way faster than domestic CPUs. Obviously it doesn't make a lot of sense there, but don't worry because there's a lot of other clues to this as well. As we move on down here, you can actually see in response to a tweet about it, another Twitter actually pointed out that we once again, almost certainly looking at the 10,105 either regular or F Comet Lake CPU. And there's a few things here, physical lugged heat spreader design. Obviously you can see right here compared to it, very similar design. Let me get rid of this. You can see very similar design in the heat spreader, pretty much everything looks almost identical. Physical substrate design is identical as far as we can see. You can see all of that. Silt screen print format on the IHS is the same. The power leader processor name is effectively very similar to that 10,105 being 01105, just kind of jumbled a little bit. As you can see up here, this is apparently rated with 3.7 gigahertz base clock, and so is the 10,105. Not only that, but the QR code on the upper right, this right here, is apparently matching that of Intel's. So basically, this is almost without a doubt a rebrand of Intel's i3. And of course, Chinese companies have a pretty big incentive to do things like this, claiming that they are actually, you know, domestic products, but kind of find out they're not just because. China is giving out some pretty massive subsidies to try and push innovation, especially in the chip market, so they can better compete with places like obviously the United States. So it's not too surprising that companies would try and get away with something like this, but it seems pretty clear that this is not in fact a Chinese made CPU. And with things like this, you know, fake CPUs effectively being released as new, this is an even better reason to join Meld Alerts at MeldAlerts.com. For those who don't know, Meld Alerts is a free way to keep up with new PC hardware releases. Basically, when a new CPU, GPU, really main PC hardware gets released, you'll get a notification so you can be first in line and make sure you get it before they're sold out. To make sure you get all the new updates, sign up at MeldAlerts.com. Once again, that's MeldAlerts.com. And next up for today, we have new information about the new Agisa update that was sent out by AMD to effectively fix the issues that we've been seeing where Ryzen 7000 X3D parts 
are burning. For those who haven't been keeping up with this, basically a few users ended up having some issues where their Ryzen 7000 X3D part effectively burned. And from what we've been seeing, it looks to be an issue caused where the CPU is able to get more voltage than it really should. This ultimately overheats it and causes a catastrophic failure of the CPU and at least in some cases, or at least in one that I've seen, it even damages the motherboard. So obviously this new Agisa update is incredibly important but unfortunately, it looks like it has some bugs. As you can see down here, we actually have a tweet that claims that the new update effectively stops you from using a couple features when it comes to memory overclocking. Not only that, but apparently it doesn't offer support for anything over DDR5-4400, while before it would offer support for up to 6,000 memory speeds. Now, I will say that some users claim that you can get up to DDR5-6000 with the new Agisa update, so I'm not 100% sure on that, but regardless, motherboard vendors are apparently receiving a new firmware update 1.0.9.0 and they're going to be getting it in the next coming weeks. So obviously we won't actually get BIOS updates for this until likely, as they're saying right here, mid to even potentially the end of May. Regardless, AMD is clearly having some major issues when it comes to these problems that they're having with their X3D parts. Though, of course, don't forget, while I do keep saying X3D parts, those are really only the ones that we've seen major malfunctions of. But according to the statement that we heard from AMD, it at least sounds like this could affect all Ryzen 7000 CPUs. So even though there does seem to be some issues with it, I'd certainly suggest you head over to your motherboard manufacturer's website and install their most recent BIOS update just to make sure that you at least should be covered. Though obviously this does seem to have some issues. It's better than your CPU effectively cooking. And speaking of major issues, it looks like there's a pretty bad one coming out from that recent data breach from MSI. As you can see right here, last month, MSI, for those who don't know, they confirmed that a ransomware group was demanding $4 million from stolen data from the company's servers. MSI acknowledged the breach and that confidential data was indeed illegally accessed. Well, it looks like the company either didn't pay the ransom or the ransomware group just uploaded it anyway, which is always a possibility with things like this because tools for motherboard firmware development are beginning to circulate on the web. Basically, it looks like they've at least sent out some of the information that they've stolen. And unfortunately, some of it is really bad. As you can see right here, it's reported that the data might have contained boot guard keys and that products from Intel, MSI, Lenovo, Supermicro, and others. Basically, these are keys that confirm with Windows that this is an official download. So Windows will allow it through and everything like that, but it isn't even just that. As you can see, it doesn't just affect the Intel boot guard technology, but all OEM signing based mechanisms, such as OEM unlock, ISH firmware, SMIP, and others. Basically, this is a really bad leak and a ton of people are potentially at risk. According to one person, the MSI Stealth, Creator, Crosshair, Prestige, Pulse, Modern, Raider, Sword, Summit, Vector, and Katana laptop series are affected. Basically, this could be a pretty major concern. Now, MSI could, of course, try and redact those keys and issue some new ones, though I'm not really sure how that would work on the consumer end of things, but it really is not good. And next up, we actually have a really interesting leak on Intel's next-gen, 14th-gen Raptor Lake CPUs. More specifically, we're talking their desktop CPUs. As you can see right here, this originally comes from a new video by Moore's Law is Dead and later by WCCF Tech, and basically they detail new information regarding the 14th gen Raptor Lake refresh desktop CPU family. Starting things off, they will apparently be supported by the existing LGA 1700 platforms. Not only that, but the lineup will come in both their S, which is their desktop platform, the Mobility HX variants, and they'll sit alongside the Meteor Lake P and Meteor Lake M families. When it comes to specs, these are based on these rumors, of course. The Intel Raptor Lake Refresh Desktop CPU family will not include more than 8 plus 16 core configurations, so they aren't going to be going up in cores or anything like that 
but they are going to be adding some new SKUs. Apparently a 6 plus 8 core SKU and a 2 plus 8 core SKU, which would be marketed as i5 and i3 tier designs. Of course, though, that's not all that interesting. What is really interesting is that apparently the top Intel 14th gen Raptor Lake refresh SKU is said to boost up to 6.2 gigahertz. And not only that, but there's even a possibility for a higher bin variant that gets all the way up to 6.5 gigahertz. Now, that's obviously incredibly impressive, though when you compare it to 13th gen, if there isn't anything more of an increase except for the clock speed, the difference with 6.2 gigahertz is only a 7% increase over the 13,900K and just a 3% increase over the 13,900KS. Now, obviously, if these somehow do like an all-core overclock, that would be a massive jump without a doubt, but I highly doubt anything like that would happen. And as far as these 6.5 gigahertz, see this is only based on the 6.2 when we move up to 6.5 it's even faster but we aren't really sure if it's going to be like this special edition ks variant or maybe just maybe it might be something like a 14,900k at 6.5 gigahertz and that obviously would be a really big jump over last gen of course with that said given this is a refresh this could also mean that their power draw goes up just as much as well and given they already suck way more power than amd's cpus it definitely wouldn't be good still 6.5 gigahertz is pretty wild and lastly for today, we have more confirmation that AMD is in fact releasing their cheaper RX 7600 GPUs fairly soon. This time, we have the confirmation from an EEC filing by ASRock, where you can see that they list three different RX 7600 SKUs. And right off the bat, you will see, unfortunately, once again, this is more proof that they are in fact going to include just eight gigabytes of memory. Still, when it comes to these exact GPUs, we have for the RX 7600 CL, that's apparently the Challenger OC variant, then the PG stands for Phantom Gaming OC, then SL is Steel Legend OC. Basically, ASRock is apparently planning to release at least three variants of the 7600 GPU. And given we're already seeing these on the EEC, they're almost certainly coming very soon. Don't forget that the most recent rumors have it coming at the end of this month. Ultimately, what this means is if you've been waiting for cheaper next-gen GPUs, they are coming. So while that does it for today, are you pumped to finally get cheaper GPUs or what do you think about those Intel CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and please give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.